All right, so today's video is on one of my core lifting philosophies. Just getting stronger, is that good advice? And more importantly, does that actually address the issue that people are having when they're not gaining the size that they want to? The conclusion that I come to is a little bit ironic, but I want to not just present you the conclusion because that's just as useless as telling you to just get stronger. The understanding of the issue and understanding what the proper solution is, is found throughout what I talk about in this video. If you've spent any time on online fitness, whether it's YouTube, Instagram comments, anything like this, you've probably run across the advice of somebody telling whether it's you yourself asking a question or you bypassing somebody else's conversation. Somebody has said, oh, I'm not getting big, I'm having a hard time getting bigger, and then the most upvoted comment in response to that is just get stronger. And while this does have a correlation, it's missing what the actual problem is. It's putting a Band-Aid on a bullet hole. And the intention of this advice isn't necessarily bad, although I'd argue the people that do resort to giving this type of advice are usually more of the black pilled type people anyways they're the reductionist types nothing matters just do this just it, it nothing matters it's that type of person it doesn't matter just do this there's no nuance in their brain there's no nuance in anything they're just nihilistic about lifting and about life and that's how these people tend to be and most most of the time based on the the advice that they're giving to these people you can tell they're beginners or maybe early intermediates. And the, the reason I know this is because they're making a false correlation between strength and size. And that's something, of course, I'll touch on in this video. Before that, the first thing that I do want to touch on is the psychological switch. Another spider. All right, just got rid of that spider. He was probably like an early intermediate power builder, if I had to guess. He did not look that big. And actually, as natural hypertrophy says, he had a spider mode physique. Ha ha. So when it comes to the psychological switch, this is, in my opinion, one of those intangibles, but it is important to discuss. And you can't guarantee that every person struggles with this because psychology is something that is different for everybody. While the lifting principles that I talk about can practically apply in most cases, of course, your environment's important, psychology will vary. So this isn't a bulletproof argument that I'm making. But this is an argument that comes from my heart. It's something that I have experienced and that I have seen other people go through. So when it comes to, this, to the psychology of lifting and of ditching your initial goal in pursuit of something else that you think will give you that goal, this is the problem. A psychological focus on strength will draw you to your strongest lifts, which are typically leverage dependent. I was drawn towards the sumo deadlift because I could move the most weight due to my leverages. So when I was told to chase strength, when I was a person that did not have that much muscle and somebody was telling me to get stronger, I didn't understand enough about lifting to realize that just getting stronger was being misapplied by myself. And at the end of the day, just get stronger never practically applies because as you'll see throughout this video, it's it's a disguised way to give you a sneak preview. It's a d very disguised, distorted way of telling people to just get bigger, as ironic as that is. So what happens with the psychological switch is you start to bias the movements that you're good at and the movements that you're built for in terms of leverages. And this is an issue when it comes to hypertrophy training because one, you're hiding your weaknesses, and two, you're doing movements that naturally take you through an easier range of motion, or to put it simply, less range of motion. Oh, I saw this guy and he got to whatever squat and he got to that squat and his legs weren't big. Well, how did he do the squat? I find it very hard to believe that someone could do a squat with good forward knee travel, pause at the bottom, and their legs don't get bigger from that. People do squats, don't use their legs, there's no forward knee travel, they use a ton of posterior chain, and then they don't get big legs from that. So something like a sumo deadlift for myself, I'm barely moving the bar. I'll, if I remember, I'll put up a clip. I've, I've posted a few videos of me doing a sumo deadlift before where I can rip a ton of weight off the floor. The problem is it's a limited range of motion. For the muscles that I should be targeting in a deadlift, 
So if I the deadlifts that I do now, primarily RDLs, I'm targeting my low back, I'm targeting my hamstrings. The problem with the sumo deadlift is that, yes, I can move a lot more weight in a sumo deadlift than I can in an RDL, but my hamstrings aren't going through much of a range of motion. Other muscle groups are taking over, like my quads and my back, like my upper traps a little bit because of the weighted stretch. But the issue here is that I'm not targeting that target muscle and I'm dispersing the tension throughout a few other muscles, but none of it's getting sufficient stimulus to actually produce hypertrophy because nothing's going through a full range of motion. And when you take my lower back, for example, since I have great leverages for this lift, I'm basically already upright. So I'm not actually placing enough tension on my lower back. Of course, I'm getting some, but at the end of the day, I can put all the tension I want there. If it's an insufficient range of motion, I'm severely limiting myself and I should be doing a movement that maybe takes those muscles through a larger range of motion and takes me to a good proximity to failure rather than just biasing the lift that gives me the best leverages. And of course, this is why the argument's bulletproof is you can say, well, just get stronger at the hypertrophy lift. And yes, that's correct. That makes perfect sense. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. But this is psychological, remember. When you're being told to just get stronger and chase strength, your mindset starts to bias big numbers and lifts that you can put up a lot of weight in. So what are you going to do? You're going to gravitate towards those bigger lifts. And this creates a counterproductive hierarchy of lifts in your program, which leads to an imbalanced physique. Even if you're telling someone to just get stronger at hypertrophy focused lifts and you ditch the whole sumo deadlift idea and everything, there's still another issue with this that I've run into with myself and I see other people run into. You bias, you still bias the muscles and the lifts that can move the most weight. You bias the bigger muscles. So now, even if I'm doing all the best lifts for hypertrophy, what do you think I'm going to enjoy doing more and prioritize more in my program? An RDL or a preacher curl? right? Like I'm not going to be able to progress and move as much weight on a preacher curl, even though it's just as important because of my bicep and my hamstring are equal. They're both a muscle group. Now we're, we're biasing the lift and we're biasing the numbers rather than the stimulus towards that actual muscle group. So at the end of the day, psychology with lifting is important. And this, why, this is why I love to record my progress and I love to track my strength but as a byproduct and an indicator that I'm actually building muscle. When you make your, your mental attachment towards performance, then you're leaving hypertrophy gains on the table potentially because you're no longer attaching your reward to the ultimate goal that you had in the first place. And this is where you might start to lose yourself a little bit in the gym. It happened to myself. You want to chase range of motion and proximity to failure, among other factors that are actively counterproductive for chasing maximal strength. So when you're chasing maximal strength, you actually start to leave hypertrophy variables that are more beneficial on the table. And when you look at the biggest lifters, and to be more specific, the biggest natural lifters, they tend to be generally strong. And from an inexperienced eye, you correlate the size of the strength. And of course, there is correlation with size and strength. However, it's not so much that you can just chase their strength and get to their size, because this is a mistake that I personally made when I was younger, where I saw the bigger guys that were stronger. And I said, all right, well, it's simple. I just have to chase that strength. Everybody on Instagram or whatever is telling me to just get stronger. I see that advice floating around everywhere. I'll do it. And then I mogged everyone in strength and they still mogged me in size. And that's when I got pretty nihilistic about lifting. So the false correlations, but all the big guys are strong. That's correct. Yes, but it's how and why they got strong. The advice of just get stronger is actually just get bigger when you dissect it, because there are so many prerequisites that come with it range of motion, tempo, proximity to failure, technique, etc., just to name the basics, this advice is a dumbed down way of telling you to get bigger and the initial issue still stands. To do a little checkpoint in this video, the conclusion that we're coming to so far is that just get stronger isn't 
terrible because clearly the bigger guys are pretty strong. But when you look at the bigger guys and how they got strong and why they got strong, you have to look at the prerequisites of what they needed to do to actually get to that size. And it's always going to be good technique, good proximity to failure, good programming for hypertrophy, good exercise selection, good range of motion, etc., among other factors. And ultimately, what we're learning is that just to get stronger has a ton of prerequisites. And when you take all of that into account and actually dissect it, you're telling people to just train for hypertrophy or you're telling them to just get bigger. So ultimately what this advice is, is someone says, I don't know how to get big. I'm not getting big, nothing's working. And you're telling them just get bigger. So the conclusion that we're coming to so far is that. And to expand on that a little bit further, when you decide to chase strength, I think you're ultimately giving up on hypertrophy training and you're settling for less. Strength training in general is going to be a little bit more straightforward. It's a little bit more simple. We know more about it in terms of science and just in the practical world. But with hypertrophy training, experimenting with it is relatively simple and observing other lifters is even more simple because they did the experiment for you. And it's up to you to draw your conclusions and learn from others, but also learn from yourself. And not to mention, we actually understand hypertrophy training, I think better than most people are willing to admit. Of course, we don't have all of the science down, but in terms of programming and the methods, we have enough information to actually do it properly. So I hate to see people settle for less and pursue something else and hope that hypertrophy, which is their initial goal, becomes the side effect of that. I'd rather see it the other way around, which in my opinion is how you properly train for hypertrophy. So settling for less. By chasing strength, you're opting to take the risk of receiving hypertrophy as a side effect, rather than chasing hypertrophy and receiving strength as a side effect. Chasing strength is masking the underlying issue. If you're not getting bigger, it's not because you're not getting stronger, it's because you're not actually stimulating hypertrophy. When you're performance oriented, the muscles can't handle as much weight that they become boring to train. And this is a sad mindset that people fall into. And I was stuck in that for years. I was stuck in that forever, where I couldn't bring myself to train arms. I couldn't bring myself to train them sufficient enough and hard enough because I didn't care because they didn't get me stronger on the lifts that I was leveraged for. And they didn't, even if I was like, all right, well, let's just focus on getting my arm strength up. It's boring. Chasing strength for lifts like your arms or your side delts or your calves or the, the small muscles that are important or the weaker muscles, to put it simply, they matter a lot. But chasing strength in those muscles isn't fun. So when you prioritize that mindset of chasing strength, very, very easy for those muscles to go onto the back burner. And when it comes back to settling for less, I would much rather see you guys optimize hypertrophy and use strength as a means of feedback for measuring muscle growth in the short term than chase strength and just hope you get bigger in the meantime. Because like I said at the start of the video, if you attach your reward to strength, it's easy to turn into a power lifter or a weird version of it, like how a lot of people mess up power building, for example, and that's exactly what I did. And I completely shortchanged myself, I ruined my mindset, and it took me a while to rebuild and relearn lifting. The ultimate issue that I have with people saying to just get stronger to chase strength, is that it's not that if you just chase strength and get stronger that you won't get any bigger, you're just you're taking an unnecessary risk and psychologically it's not going to be as rewarding in terms of actually making hypertrophy progress. But the biggest issue that I have is that it's not the advice, it's not the outcome or whatever, it's that it's just simply addressing the wrong issue. If you're not getting bigger, it's not because you're not getting stronger, it's because you're not getting bigger. And it's very simple. When it comes to addressing the wrong issue, you can go ahead and get stronger, but if your issue was something else in the first place, which it always is, then you're just going to plateau again quickly. This is where the powerlifting-esque mindset starts to creep in, 
because you're ignoring the actual problem and you're caught up in chasing the measuring stick. When the measuring tool becomes the goal, it's no longer a useful method. It defeats its own purpose. This doesn't just solve the issue. It can take you further away from finding the actual solution that you need. Whenever somebody's having an issue gaining size, let's take me for an example. When I wasn't gaining size, it's because my proximity to failure on certain lifts was off. There were a few lifts and a few muscle groups that I grew very well, like my glutes, my spinal erectors, for example, my traps even. These muscles, my chest too. It was the powerlifting muscles. They grew well because I biased them in my program, but everything else wasn't getting bigger. And the reason everything else wasn't getting bigger is because I wasn't training them hard enough. It's as simple as that because my mindset wasn't centered around growing those muscles that aren't involved in these big lifts. So what, what was I doing? I was doing a three by 10 at RPE seven for hammer curls. And that's a lot of the time it's going to be a waste of time, especially once you're past that beginner phase. So the issue is when you're not getting bigger, there's something, there's something bigger going on that just focusing on strength isn't going to address. Typically, it's going to be proximity to failure. A lot of the time, it's going to be tempo or technique or range of motion too. If you're not getting bigger, you have to learn proper technique and you have to understand how hard you have to train that. And this isn't just super strict, boring, like perfectly still bicep curls. This is how hard can you possibly train that muscle? What's the best way you can just locally smoke that muscle? And then how do you build off of that session so you can keep that momentum going strong? That's, to put it very, very simply, the general philosophy of hypertrophy training. So the conclusion that I have for you guys is that just get stronger is ultimately just get bigger, which reopens that can of worms that needed to be opened initially. So you have to learn hypertrophy programming and you have to understand hypertrophy training as well. And a lot of the time, as important as programming it is, is and as much as I love it, if you're not getting bigger and you're a beginner or you're earlier in your lifting career, a lot of the time it's the training, it's the execution, it's the technique, which isn't solved through the program itself. So of course, that's a, a topic for a separate video, but let me draw back to this video. A useful application when it comes to strength, because of course it is going to be somewhat correlated with size, the useful application of strength progression is to analyze it as feedback from muscle growth. Increases in strength are a side effect of hypertrophy, and with this application, you're letting it be the side effect rather than chasing it and hoping for the best. So ultimately, you can chase strength and assume that hypertrophy will be somewhat of a side effect. You can also chase hypertrophy and assume that strength will be somewhat of a side effect. The best way to go, in my opinion, is to chase hypertrophy, and strength will likely be a side effect, but it won't be maximized, but it'll still be there. It's the same thing when you're chasing strength. You can assume that there will be a hyper hypertrophic side effect. However, it won't be maximized, but it will be there, and that's likely as an indicator that you are getting stronger, but you don't need an indicator because strength is it's on paper. It's very simple. Hypertrophy, not so much, and this is why people get so confused about it. So with that all being said, that's all I've got for today. If you guys have any questions or anything, leave them in the comments. I'd love to see you guys ask any questions or leave feedback. Uh, I love to read through the comments, so that'll be cool.